Hello everyone. In the lab today, we are going to work on implement Azure Logic Apps integration with Azure Event Grid. And especially if you're preparing for the Microsoft Azure Architect Design Examination, which is AZ304, just a newer version of it, uh, this lab is going to be very useful for you. Now, in this lab, we're going to follow one of the lab exercises that is available on the GitHub from Microsoft Learning and I'm going to give you the link in my video so you can study the background and everything a little bit better. Here is the little gist of what we are really going to do. <clears throat> so you have like many other labs you have an on-prem environment and within the on-prem environment you have a network monitoring framework that rely on a combination of agent based and agent less solutions. Now since the agent less solution rely on polling to determine state changes, sometimes this process is inefficient. Uh, and, and the fictitious company is thinking about moving to the cloud and they want to evaluate the event, use of event-driven architecture uh, using event grid by supporting the routing of events by utilizing a publisher subscriber model. So that is what you kind of have to remember it's a publisher subscriber model when uh, you use the event driven architecture. So two different things that you have to have a little bit of knowledge. One is the event and another is the event handler. Uh, event is created by a publisher such as a blob storage account like something is uploaded to a blob deleted from the blob. Uh, it creates uh, an entry Events are published to an endpoint, and the endpoint is commonly referred to as a topic. Events come from hosted on-prem in a data center or even other cloud. So this event grid could be scalable. It, your events can come from other subscriptions, on-prem, other data centers, other cloud. So it's very, very scalable. Okay, and even handlers, they typically include technologies such as uh, serverless technologies such as functions, logic apps, Azure automation, and uh, even handlers are registered with event grid by creating an event subscription. So let's go to the lab and look at what are we going to do. So here what I did is just a gist of the, all the information that we have here. And... Uh, here, Azure Event Grip is agnostic to any language or, or platform. And while it integrates natively with Azure services, it can just as easily be, be leveraged by anything that supports the HTTP protocol. So that makes it very uh, useful if you're a developer uh, and you know how to, how to use the HTTP protocol, you could uh, easily use this, right? So what we're gonna do, uh, in this lab, we are going to investigate integration of Azure Logic Apps with uh, Event Grid. Okay, there are two main objectives. We're going to detect when the state of a design designated Azure VM is changed, like it's started or shut down, things like that. And automatically, you want to generate an email notification in response to that particular event. Okay, so Two things, integrate the logic apps with event grid. So uh, often time uh, you may get a question where uh, I have a problem, are we gonna solve with Azure logic apps or are we gonna use the event grid? But a lot of times you are a thing that they can both work together, okay? Uh, trigger, and the next thing is trigger execution about logic apps in response to an event representing a change to a resource within a resource group. That's good. So like many other lab environment, this lab is probably going to take us about an hour. And here are the files that you need. And what I typically do, uh, I know this is labs four, and then I have a, a parameters file, uh, then two other JSON files. Okay, so what I'll do, I'm going to go up here, right click on it, open it in a different window okay and then go to the home folder and i'm going to go to all files go to the four folder okay and these are the files that i need okay so we can uh, open it 
and save it from here directly if I like so let's just do that since we are here uh, let's go to desktop and this is uh, just create a new folder uh, just call it 304 and uh, under this I have 04 and then save okay so we get the first file um, we got the first file then uh, over here raw and that's the second file that I needed come back over here no from here go back and go back uh, and that's the third file and that's pretty much all uh, you need to have with you to get started with the lab okay those are three files we're going to use a template deployment for that okay so go ahead and get those files and uh, if you want you can pause the video while you get it so here we are so now we are ready so first thing we need to prepare the lab environment in this one we're going to deploy azure virtual machine by using the azure resource manager template so you gotta have a free or a valid Azure subscription where you do have to have some uh, uh, permission to deploy resources. So what I'll do, I'm gonna go and log in to my Azure environment. Let's see if I'm already logged in and looks like I am. So that's good. So I have some resources over here, some resource group. Uh, so this is my uh, Azure environment at the moment. Okay, so once you're in, we can open the cloud shell and uh, in the cloud shell we want to select the power cell and then we are going to upload the files that we have downloaded okay so over here easiest way to get to that one is to click on over his tiny little icon and it, it just said popped up cloud shell right so hold it it's just cloud shell click on it if this is the first time you're trying to log mm -hmm. in it it may ask you to create a storage account just say yes and there are both bass and parcel version if you logged into a black window a black background it's usually is the part is the bass window so just click on the drop down and go to the parcel and it would the background would turn into a blue one okay so now you know that you are in within the parcel window all right so we are there so now the next thing we are going to do we're going to upload these files then we are going to run this particular command okay this is needed for our template deployment so let's see let's put the command in and i'm going to use the east us so i'm going to replace that with east us in here and if you look at what is doing new az subscription deployment that is a command that you use for when you are deploying from a template and you're just providing this is the template file and it's uh, under your home folder and you're going to provide uh, the location and this uh, resource group is going to get created so before we run the command we need to still update upload the files so you need to click on this upload download files button click on upload go to desktop and we created a folder for 304 and 4 and then I'm just going to upload all three files. Okay, so that one, and it says complete. Uh, sorry, not that one. Mm, this one. Upload. I'm going to get the second one. Um, once the second one is done, I'm going to click it one more time, get the third one. Okay, so that way I have all three files uh, in my home environment. So you can really do a ls command on it. And I have some other files in here as well, but if you see. Uh, these are the files as you deploy 30304 sub AGs and so those files are now available to me and uh, I should be able to use them. Alright, so go back over here. Now we are ready to run this command. We made just a little modification. We added the region where we want to deploy this template. So get that. Come back over here. Sometimes I just do a clear so to clear and give me some more space and then uh, hit enter and again it's a pretty simple command and so hit enter and this one should give me this particular resource group and just wait for a few minutes and yeah look at that so we got 
uh, resource group. So if I go back in my resource group and I refresh, I should see a new resource group named AZ30304A. Do I have that? No, I don't have it now. So I'm going to refresh this button and there we go. So you got the resource group. Okay, so we are good until that point. Uh, then the next thing we need to do they're asking to upload the other two files uh, we have already done that okay so we are really ready to uh, start this deployment process what is this gonna do this is gonna deploy Azure virtual machine running Windows Server 2019 and if you look at it uh, if you really need to study you need to go and study the deployment file which uh, I would highly recommend that you do so before we do anything let's get that one and look at the command as job means once we run this command uh, although the command is not completely done since it's going to take a little bit of time it will be run as a background process okay so let's uh, verify that and you will get your command from BAP. so paste hit enter and look at that it says long running process so it's basically running in the background and you got your command from back and here it also says do not wait for the deployment to complete but instead proceed to the next exercise that's great so the next exercise is the first thing so the so far what we have done we have just deployed a virtual machine using the Azure resource manager template and it's a Windows Server 2019 really our lab starts over here in this one, uh, we have two major steps that we need to perform. We need to create an Azure Active Directory service principle and then assign the reader role to the Active Directory service principle. So let's see how to create that one. Now this one, we have uh, some commands that we need to run. Okay, so let's copy this command and let's study this a little before we run it. So copy this. Uh, maybe come over here let's see put it down there so here password we are storing the password we want to use uh, secure password is usually you take this password and you apply uh, secure string so this is a method that's gonna uh, make like a grid hash value and uh, it, it make the password uh, more stronger okay and usually you would be using the secure password and not the password for your authentication purposes so here you are creating a new AZ AD application and the display name is going to be this and you're saying this uh, is gonna be using this particular home page and identity Identifier fire URI is so this is the URIs and look at that here you're providing this is a password that you want to use okay that looks pretty good so I'm gonna copy we already copied that actually so we're gonna copy and paste it over here uh, so this command has already ran this command has already ran uh, so now I'm ready to run this command and hit enter okay so this command is right now running which is doing the new AZ Active Directory application registration process at the moment. So this looks like it is also done. So let's come back over here and then run the following to create a new AZ AD service principle associated with the application you created in the previous step. So here we have already stored the application that we created in this particular variable right if you look at here uh, this az30304 aa dapp we already stored that so to associate a new service principle with that we're just gonna uh, do this particular command okay so let's uh, copy this one and then come back over here and run this hit enter and it says service principle uh, now it's assigning the role contributor and over that scope looks like everything went well we got our command from back there's no errors so come back over here in the output of this note the value of the application ID property you will need this for the next exercise 
so let's get that one application ID is this so let's copy that one and uh, put it in our notepad uh -oh. put it in our notepad and uh, over here and then come back then once we are we are done with this tape from the cloud cell uh, we need to uh, run this following to identify the ID property of the current Azure subscription and the value of the tenant ID property. So we need two other things, tenant ID and the Azure ID. So let, let's get those information as well. Uh, so this is an useful command because you need this for, uh, for many, many purposes. So get easy subscription. So here is your ID and here is your tenant ID. I'm going to copy the whole thing okay copy and put it back in here so I have those information uh, with me as well so just remember let me expand this one yeah that one looks good so name that's the ID and this is my tenant ID and state is enabled and just to remember this is the app ID I'm gonna write down okay so we have uh, all the information that we needed. So we have now created an Azure Active Directory service principle. Uh, first, we created a new Azure AD application, and then we created this application principle and associated this principle with that application. All right, next we need to authorize access to the Azure AD service principle. So now we go to the resource group and uh, we're gonna go to go and figure out that particular resource and we are going to do some access control on here and we want to assign the reader role uh, to this particular user id or service principle okay so let's uh, come back over here and i'm just going to search for the resource group directly and here is my resource group and i click on it so once I go there, here is my access control for the resource group. And here, what add a role assignment. So I can hit add here. And from here, I need a reader role. So click on reader. And this is good. And the user that where we want to add the reader role is this. So get that one, paste it, and there you go. So you select that one and save and that should save the role assignment has been added okay for the particular account so come back over here so we are done with this step as well the next we're going to do implement an azure uh, logic app so this is really straightforward process so we're going to create an azure logic app uh, add uh, a trigger to the logic app add a condition to the logic app and add an action to the logic app so let's see how to do that so i'm just going to write down the steps in here real quick so those are the things that we're going to do uh, so the first we want to create a logic app and we're going to configure the logic app the way the lab wants us to do so go back over here uh, just search for logic apps in the search window at the top and just uh, click on it okay the first one that shows up just click on it and then hit add uh, to get started with the logic app or you can also click on the create logic app blue icon that you saw so let's see how to configure so for this one looks like we're going to create a new resource group so let's come over here create new paste it hit ok so that's the resource group that we're going to use uh, logic app name is this as specified in that lab so let's get that one and uh, region uh, name of the region okay so the region wherever your resources are your logic app has to be in the same region and it could be an exam question to be uh, just be aware of it so if you have uh, resources all in East US, your logic app needs to be in the East US as well. So we are going to choose that East US as the logic app location. And log analytics, we don't need it for the lab, so it keep it turned off. 
and then you can do review and create and create so it's that's all we need to do to uh, create the logic app and as soon as the validation is done we are going to click on the create button to create this particular logic app and we'll have a logic app instance with us uh, that we can work with okay so that's it so let's go back so now once you have the logic app now we can add a trigger okay so here is the next step where uh, we are going to go inside the logic app and uh, we're going to start with a blank logic app the, you will see a lot of like uh, templates within the logic app and if you if you are comfortable using one of the one of the one of the built-in one that can help uh, resolve your problem or whatever you're trying to do feel free to use that one for this particular one the logic app deployment looks like successful I'm just gonna click on go to the resource so we are here and uh, if you see it's the logic app designer and start with the common trigger so you look at that how many different type of uh, connectors or triggers are available recurrence when a http request is received when a new email is received when a new tweet is posted when a new file is created on onedrive i mean there, there, there are tons of stuff in here okay so but we want to do we want to create a blank logic app so we'll click on that one make it simple and then what we are going to do and uh, use the search connector trigger uh, to search for event grid so over here uh, you need to search for event grid and i just said event and i'm just waiting uh, event grid usually as your event grid so let's say event event grid or publish i think that your event grid is the one that we want to use for this lab uh, when a resource even occurs Azure event grid trigger to add it to the designer workspace so when a resource event occurs so we got the right one for ourselves okay so we got that one in the Azure event grid select the connect with service principle link and specify the following so over here okay so click on it default directory connect with service principle so click on this link and over here now we have to provide all the information that we created previously so connection name that we are going to specify this uh, client id the value of application id property that you have identified earlier so come over here that's the app id i hope you still remember uh, what you created so come over here put our client ID is the application ID uh, client secret is the client secret of your Azure Active Directory application uh, client secret is this and put it in there and tenant ID we have also got it in our uh, notepad so this is my tenant ID so let's get that one copy uh, let's come back over here put it over here so this is really creating a connection to my azure event grid okay so what uh, next is that we need to do is when a resource event occur tile specify the following setting so let's come back when a resource uh, event occurs the unique identifier of the Microsoft event subscription so first you need to select the subscription and I have only one and uh, maybe I need the subscription ID the value subscription ID so it didn't pop up usually for a lot of uh, uh, work that I do with Azure if there's only one subscription it will just show up but in case it didn't show up that's why probably we need to get the subscription ID and just put it specify this is the subscription ID we're gonna work with oh, so if that happens just click on it okay so did we put it could not retrieve the value authentication failed authorization header so there we are having a little bit of trouble enter custom value okay let me investigate this just a second 
Okay, I'm going to continue with the lab. I'm going to use my tenant ID authentication to log into my logic app. For some reason, I'm having a trouble with the service principle like this method right now. So all I did it, did was like click on the change connection uh, and you just need to click on add new connection instead of going to the connect with service principle I'm just going with the default directory for now okay and we can, I mean you can troubleshoot spend some more time uh, but my goal is to make this logic app work so I'm just gonna uh, stick to this and see what happens okay just hit cancel so I already created the connection so now if I click on it I'm getting the uh, my subscription that I have a resource type we want to choose Microsoft resources resource group so, uh, so made a mistake uh, so this copy not open link and then uh, just paste it over here it should pick up so that's your resource type now one of the resource groups that you're going to work on so if you click on it uh, this is the resource group that we created earlier where we're going to work on so put that in here uh, so we have it okay so now you can have multiple events and you can add as many events as you like so probably we don't need all of them we can also get rid of them so let's see how many of need so it looks like we need two different kind of events first is when a resource write is successful another is when a resource delete is successful so just first put this okay so that's my event one and event two is this uh it paste it in oh, oh yeah, you got no delete success is good delete success so we got that one this I don't need so let's just delete that one that one I don't need delete that one so now uh, we have a connection if something happens to this particular resource group uh, delete or write we're gonna do something okay so what is that something uh, when the resource event occurs style select add a new parameter and select the subscription name so here add new parameter and subscription name and let's see what we need to need to a subscription name name uh, to use for the new event group subscription and uh, we're gonna use this as our subscription name come back over here and put it there okay so i think we have got this configured properly at this time you can hit save let's see if we need to do anything else in this one uh, i think we are, we are done with that so hit save so that is all you needed for this particular logic app instance to work and make the connection and have two events event types one for the write operation and another for our delete operations okay so this all looks good uh, save logic app is created so everything uh, looks good there so next step add a condition to the logic app okay uh, in the logic azure portal on the logic app designer blade in the newly provisioned logic app select a new step so if you come over here okay and if you scroll down here is your new step button so click on it so here you're gonna de design okay uh, we, you have two different conditions what are we going to do when those conditions are met okay so let's see what we want to do in the choose an action tile use the search connector uh, to search for condition okay and uh, in the result in the action column select condition to add it to the designer workspace so we need some more conditions so over here uh, paste it for condition okay so control what is my condition search connector centric states for search for condition in the list of in the action column select condition 
in action column uh, in our action column select a condition okay so that is now has given a condition and it, look it, it's also look very graphical and uh, now we can add some conditions and if if the condition is true we're going to do some action if it's false we can uh, do some another action right some other action so over here we have that uh, now select the ellipsis symbol in the upper right corner and rename this uh, to this if a virtual machine in the resource group has changed we are gonna do something so over here what they're saying click on this and uh, rename this and this condition is really if a virtual machine in the resource group has changed okay so that's what we're gonna do uh, select the choose value text box on the left hand side uh, in the pop-up window and in the expression tab enter this okay choose a value so choose a value and in here what we want uh, let's see expression expression or dynamic content let me see make sure expression yes yeah, the expression window you just paste this one and hit okay and uh, so that's now uh, over here and uh, come back over here in the is ensure the is equal to appears so over here uh, is equal to is there so that is good is equal to and uh, on the right we're going to provide okay this trigger if it matches the right operation so come over here choose a value uh, expression that's not expression maybe dynamic content no or just paste it here yeah, it's just you need to just paste it over there so that so we got that so if, if this trigger matches that we, we're going to do something uh, let's see on the logic app designer blade hit save let's see if, this, if we missed anything looks like we got everything that we needed so now i can just hit save so we still haven't designed an act uh, an accent so what, what if it's true what we're going to do if it's false what are we gonna do we have not decided that we haven't defined that yet so let's come back next is add an action to the logic app so that's the next thing right so as I said I we have not decided any action so that's the next thing that we're gonna do the other thing I was gonna do here uh, I'm gonna go back to the code view real quick okay then come back to the designer okay and then you expand it now you see that thing is uh, this data operation that looks a little bit better in here and this uh, looks a little bit better all right so we had we had done that now we are ready to add an action over here so let's do that uh, we are going to look at the if true tile and we're going to add an action and then on the connection box we're going to use the outlook for our access so over here add an action and here Outlook. So we're gonna email uh, Outlook. Which one do we wanna use? Microsoft Office 365 Outlook. Let's see if there's any other Outlook out there. And they're just saying just use the Outlook.com. So that is the one that I also want to use. The Outlook.com. Okay. So in here, uh, if it's true, we are most likely gonna create an event or uh, uh, send an email so there has to be some like send email send an email so most likely this is what we're going to choose let's see uh, yeah so here we're going to choose a send an email and then on the outlook.com we're going to sign in so come over here send an email okay so now we need to create a connection to the outlook.com so just sign in and I can use the email that I'm using at the moment so let's see so that email is good so let's just sign in and give permission so it needs to add a phone number okay okay so we got a phone number 
uh, enter the code shown below so I need to find my phone let's see if I got the number with me and uh, I'm just gonna pause the video get the number and uh, restart give me a second all right I got the authentication done shows um, come over here and in here just say yes and uh, break free from password I don't need that right now so I say no thanks and uh, so this is now connected to my Outlook and I have given the permission to use my Outlook email address to send email to anybody so here I can uh, send an email to myself so is a labs 2024 at outlook dot com and then okay let's see what uh, they they're asking to configure any particular way uh, so we have done that we have done that uh, to this is we have submitted subject type resource updated and then in the dynamic context column to the right, uh, select subject. So get this first over here. So this uh, email uh, could be could be dynamically generated your subject. Okay, so this and then add dynamic content. Okay, click on it. And what do you want to add? Even time or ID or subject. So you can get a subject for this one if you like. So that's this one you wanted uh, select subject so that's good so that's we got it uh, what you want you can move this uh, and put it at the beginning come on there we go <laughs> so we got that one and in the body they're asking to add some more dynamic content let's see if we can find it from here add dynamic content and uh, we need to add in the body uh, let's see events so the whole it's information about the events okay so you can uh, search for event here uh, so you can add event time even type id again if you want you can add the subject uh, let's see if there's anything else they're asking uh, yeah that's pretty much all of it uh, type and select topic so topic may be another thing that we can also select so it's just topic here is my topic so we got all of that so now if you want you can again take this uh, make them like nice oh, I probably deleted something uh, so let's go uh, make this bulleted and look a little bit nicer so id come back over here so it's just some sample you can add more you can add less but i'm just going to play with too much so this is all i need i want the subject to be dynamically created and all the information that should be here and those information will be automatically generated as well okay and then uh, on the logic app designer played now I can select the save so think about what we kind of did we created a logic app uh, designer uh, in, uh, instance and in this one uh, we are basically uh, worked on this page when a resource event occurs and we have two different event types okay uh, write success and delete success once we have that we created a condition in that condition if it's true if, if the write operation happens we are configuring okay if it's true send us an email okay that's what we just did uh, the next thing that we need to do is implement an event subscription in this one we have three main tasks configure the event subscription review the functionality of the azure logic logic app 
and at the end we're just going to remove all the resources that we have deployed in the lab because we don't want to pay for the resources that are not being used uh, anything but just for the lab okay uh, so configure event subscription so what we want to do we're going to go back to the uh, logic application blade and uh, we're going to look at the trigger history so we can just go from here as well and go over here and uh, trigger history should be somewhere in here let me make sure that we are yeah we are in the same and right place we are here and uh, run trigger and uh, run history okay so let's come over here summary section on the when a resource event occurs split copy the value of the callback url text box so let's come back over here okay all right so here the c trigger history is a little bit kind of hidden and it was a really small and tiny so once you click so let me go back and show you one more time so under overview once you go to the lab you are in the overview section here is the summary section by the way and uh, over here under evaluation you have a little tiny button called c trigger history that's what you need to create uh, click on so once you click on this one this is the callback post url that they're talking about to create so we create that one so we can uh, use this url to interact with our logic app right in the Azure portal, navigate back to uh, copy the value. So let's uh, save this one somewhere over here because we probably most likely going to need this one. Uh, so in this one, we're going to go back to the resource group and uh, look at the events. So let's copy this one. Go to this resource group and uh, we're going to click on events okay now you see that resource group is not really subscribed to any events so if you are not subscribed then this resource group is not really sending anything uh, to the logic app so you need to subscribe and it's pretty simple you just have to click on the event subscription so does it make sense so you have your logic app that's now ready to do some stuff but you need to get the events notification when the event happens the logic app needs to know before it evaluates whether whether the event matches your criteria and based on that sends you an email right so come back over here and click on event subscription then create event subscription blade click on create so let's do that we clicked on the event subscription and now we need to configure how do we need to configure we need to configure this way as per the lab instruction so we're gonna uh, give this one uh, event schema is good event grid schema system topic name accept the default value file filter to event type so these are the only one that we are gonna, that we are worried about resource write success resource delete success and resource action success so copy that one and uh, just paste it over here uh, let's see oh no not that one not that one so over here uh, you system topic name was whatever defaults uh, I'll just say sys topic is good uh, here everything is selected we only want to select uh, resource right success resource write success then uh, resource delete success action success so three successes that we need the success so cancel and failure i'm going to remove and i'm going to keep the three success events in here okay so we got that one and the last thing is the endpoint we're going to use a webhook for that one uh, endpoint select uh, webhook and let's come down and let's see if there's anything else that we need to do in the url string you copy it at the beginning of this task so here 
what we need to do select an endpoint and here here's the post URL that we have copied at the beginning of the lab copy this one and paste it over here so now what's happening is this is uh, oh, we have no we're fine no we didn't we're not fine something is something didn't work so let's read this real quick uh, uh oh it's gone why it's gone deployment has failed with provider registration with microsoft event create resource provider is not registered in the subscription register the provider in the subscription and retype the operation so i need to register uh, the provider so let's just do that give me one second okay i don't know why it gave me an error because i tried one more time it just uh, worked fine so let me do this one more time so az you're gonna get this name and you would put it in here okay even schema you keep as is uh, what I provided I provide the topic name test okay and in here um, you can remove the failures okay and keep only those three success points use webhooks because you have a post endpoint and from here most likely I choose some uh, white space at the end that caused this trouble so you just copy this one uh, paste it over here and confirm your selection and uh, that should be it and then create we have already done this uh, and this uh, was successful yeah so this is all good deployment even subscription has been successful so we have now uh, subscribed to the logic app and any event happens where the right delete or action are uh, successful within this resource group it's going to send a notification for those events to our logic app and in the logic app if it meets our condition it will send us some automated email notification that something is going on right so over here this is what we're going to do this is the last thing that we need to do preview the functionality in the azure portal now we can go to this resource group and there's a vm let's just copy the name of the vm and just search for it now over here so there's the vm there's the vm it showed up so let's open up the vm so this is my vm and in this one uh, what they're doing they're going to change the size of it so just change some other size so that's a uh, uh, infrastructure change just click on size and from here we are going to resize to something else so from here to maybe there okay just click on resize and it's going to resize the virtual machine so since this is gonna be considered as a successful event because most likely this is gonna be successful we'll know in a minute uh, this event that we are doing some operation uh, it's gonna be uh, registered with the logic app and the logic app sees our conditions is now met it should send me an email to my outlook email address that I provided this is still going on so let's go back over here and uh, navigate back to this and select refresh so first thing you will see uh, if you have a round history if this event is picked up as one of the events listed okay so let's uh, is this done let's see resize the virtual machine so that's good so it has resized so go to the logic apps go to your logic apps and what we want to do we want to look at the trigger run history okay so we have three run histories now uh, let's see so this the first one looks like it's the most recent one so let's click on it and read it what it is so if I click on it uh, it's just telling me that it has gone through and uh, connected to the logic app and has gone some stuff okay so let's come over here let's see what it's doing run history listing 
select an entry with the longest duration representing the successful resizing of the Azure VM okay so here looks like uh, all three they are really associated uh, uh, events so they're saying the la la largest one so this 504 is most likely the longest one uh, with the virtual machine creation so they are asking to select that one but here it looks like this got ticked this got ticked this one is not ticked so let's click on this one as well tick tick and not ticked and this one same thing tick tick and not tick so let's see what they are saying over here on the logic app uh, blade review the diagram represent the web workflow of the logic app run uh, select when a resource event occurs rectangle in the output select show run outputs so logic app blade when a resource event occurs when a resource event occurs so click on this one and they are asking us to expand so uh, show raw outputs so show raw outputs so these are so inputs so raw outputs so click on this one so this is my raw outputs okay that looks like a json formatted file uh, and so it's got all the information about what happened on the outputs blade review the details of the event and note it includes such details as the identity of your user account and the ip address from which the request uh, to resize the VM was originated. So let's if I look at this. Yeah, I have stuff uh, my name address uh, Who requested all those stuff is in here? Okay, navigate to the inbox of your email account you specified in the previous exercise and verify that you in that uh, Verify that in includes an email generated by the topic app this is let's see if we uh, if, if we can validate that one it was a little weird from here uh, since we looked at in here and at least from this expression result says false so it looks like it did not send an email that's what it kind of looked like to me from this logic app so let's go and see our outlook so I'm gonna pause go into, into the outlook and then restart the video again all right, I'm back to my Outlook inbox, and as you can see, uh, this Outlook inbox has now got an email notification that resource updated, and this is all of it. And what happened? This is the event again, Microsoft Resource Resource Write Success, and in this, uh, this is the uh, ID and the subscription ID, and the, this is the virtual machine and all of the information is with me now now one last thing that i want you guys to show over here if you look at this okay sometimes once the event happens and then for some reason if the logic cap fails to run okay you can click on the run history and it is going to show you some failure like over here an action uh, failed so a lot of times you see that feel free to click on the resubmit button a lot of time that will uh, take and try to resubmit the event and those will show up in here and uh, your email or whatever action you want to take with the uh, with the logic app will be successful all right so so i think we have now uh, have come to the end of the lab so at this time i'm going to go ahead and clean up the resources and uh, and uh, end the lab so kind of think about what we have done in this uh, lab it was a little confusing uh, uh, multiple moving parts so you created the logic app instance okay so in that logic app instance uh, what you did it, the, the virtual machine that we created is really just to uh, test out our logic app if it's working properly and we deployed in the within the resource group okay so let's uh, I don't know if I have a paint or something so I can uh, paint uh, image okay, sometimes when I use Linux I forget that uh, I don't have all the uh, Windows things with me so let's get a new presentation maybe 
and what I just want to do real quick and draw some boxes okay hold on for a second here yeah. so you have a resource group okay so this is the RG the resource group within the resource group we deploy the virtual machine okay so within the resource group we have a virtual machine so VM we deploy and then we created a logic app okay that's your logic app so all the events we can send it to the logic app but you need the subscription so we created the subscription as well okay and we used the webhook because uh, we are using a post url for this uh, how the the way we configured this logic app okay so if anything happens we are using the post URL to send the webhook to send the event notification back to the logic app. Now the logic app has some conditions. Okay, so based on the conditions, if the condition meets a certain things like the uh, read, write, uh, some change operation within this resource group, then it's going to email me and notify here something is going on. Please take a look. Okay, so what I would suggest do this lab maybe uh, multiple times until until you get a little bit more comfortable play with your uh, resource group uh, change your size couple times make sure if it's all working maybe delete your uh, your VM create a new VM and just test it out until you're completely comfortable all right if you're studying for the exam uh, good luck if you think this video is useful please give me a like and thumbs up and subscribe and please uh, leave your valuable comments so I can make uh, better videos next time. Thank you and good luck.